Well, welcome to the next installment of F My Ass Raw. This is episode two. Um, and today we're gonna be learning about I gotta put another battery in. All right, so we're just gonna dive right into this topic. How Instagram is taking over skateboarding. Hey, how's it going? I'm Jack. And today, I'm here to tell you about the word slamming. I'm in Cabo with a blind hub, pulling on her hair, fuck her in her ass hub. I'm, I'm, I'm a nasty nigga, she trashy, she's sucking on my dick, finger fuck her in the back. It's literally a whole new model. This is a whole new, not even model, it's a whole new landscape of... It's a whole new career path. It's a whole new landscape of content, and that content is being absorbed differently than it had been previously. And I feel like this has all happened within the last five years or so. It's all changed so quick. I mean, and I have Spencer here. You guys know who Spencer is. If you don't know who Spencer is and you're new to this channel, uh, Spencer's channel and Instagram and all that stuff is in the description below. But if you don't know Spencer from this channel, you probably know Spencer from Instagram. Spencer has a really big Instagram account, which he has grown exponentially and has had like dozens of viral videos. Yeah, feeding into what you were saying, that's kind of the path that I took instead of like the usual the sitting, mainstream. sitting footage in. With Instagram nowadays, it gives you, the, the creator, the skater, the opportunity to make your own stuff. I mean, I guess before you're still making your own stuff, but you go out with a filmer, you film things, you have it edited, then you send the footage in. You obviously have to know how to edit and film clips, but you have this platform where you can just quickly post your own things. Right, Well, and you also and taught can. yourself all that too, like editing. Yeah. And I feel like it's more so easier now than ever to pick up on stuff like that because you see all these Instagram edits and you see all these kids and how they're doing it and it's like, oh, I use iMovie in my iPhone and yeah. I use the current music that everyone's listening to and it's kind of relevant. Not only is there a ton of content and, and footage all over Instagram, people are posting all the time, every day. So you can just instantly go on Instagram, instantly Instagram, and see all of this footage, all of this content and you get to see stuff that's that's viral, that's semi-viral, that's not so viral. There's just shit all over the internet. It's so much more accessible than just waiting for the next full length to come out or even just waiting for the next thrasher video or solo part that comes out. Content creating has become so accessible. It's so easy to make content now. You have iMovie on your phone. You have a phone that films in 4K. That's not how it used to be. You know, the career path of skating used to be you would, you would have a filmer. And by the way, this career path still happens now. Right. But it's right. like, and obviously you know that like there's the mainstream side of skateboarding and then there's this whole like Social other. Media type, yeah. Right, and, and if you don't know that, I mean, cause I, there's probably some kids out there that are, you know, too young and too yeah. new to skateboarding to even know that, but. Yeah, so you basically you used to go out with a filmer and film for a year for a video part, for a full length, or just for your solo part or whatever, and you would send it into companies, and then you would also send it into some sort of uh, outlet that would post it, so Thrasher, Transworld, right. uh, whoever. Now that Instagram came along, it's a much faster paced thing that's so accessible to edit it on your phone, and then you just post it. If you look at these big Instagram skaters, they're putting out new videos every few days. The stimulation factor is so much higher nowadays. Like everyone needs a new video all the time. Right. Like new video, new video. It's a lot different from back in the day when you had to, like you said, wait a full year right. for a new part to come out. It's very popular opinion to romanticize about like time. The past times. Right, be like, oh my God, we need to get back to the times where we didn't have all this technology and Everyone's people's eating member berries. A lot of that stuff you can agree with, but I don't agree with a lot of it also because I, things change all the time. It's like people don't still get newspapers delivered to their house to get the news. Let's, no. get, let's get back to that. <laughs> yeah. I think we can all agree that like it's there are benefits to how things are done nowadays as opposed to 10 years ago. Certain things, obviously, it does affect negatively. Um, I mean, you don't get as many full length video parts. So even though Spencer's 23 and I'm 27, we're still almost a different generation within skateboarding. But he's more well adapted to like 
how things are currently than I would be. I grew up where yeah. we would watch, you know, video, and I'm sure you guys all still watch video parts. Like, I'm not saying that you don't, but I'm just saying buying a video, watching 411, like having to wait like till magazines came out to get your skate information. Like that doesn't. I did all that too, but I was but I was younger, uh, so you probably had a longer spree of doing that. Than exactly, you. it's more ingrained in me being used to that than it is you. When shit started changing, you were already on top of like the whole Instagram game. But you built your shit early on and, and kind of figured it out pretty early that like, oh, this can work. Like yeah. these numbers add up. I was late on YouTube though. There's YouTube too, YouTube and Instagram. Like it's a whole different thing. And I've been doing this for a year and a half now, which to me, I don't feel like I've even gotten started, but to like a 13 year old or 14 year old watching me, he's already went from being in eighth grade to 10th grade or 11th grade in by the, by this time. So like those years have gone by to him and he's such a different person now. So there's like a whole new wave of kids that watch stuff on YouTube now and right. watch like Sean Rodriguez and Luis Mora and they're used to swearing and they're used to all this non PG stuff now. So it's kind of like the same kind of stuff that kids are watching on Instagram, I feel like. It's a different content, but it's the same structure of, of putting a lot of content out right. all at once. Like it's the same in the aspect of, you can just post a video, then you know a couple days later post another video. You still don't have to wait a year for a part, but it's, right. it's different. It's a different genre of content, I feel like. Right, well, and that's also too why you see a lot of a lot of people do a lot of the same tricks all the time too because like when it comes to a video part every trick is obviously going to be different you're not going to repeat tricks in a video part that's like a big yeah. obvious no-no right but when you're putting out content all the time 20 tail slides in your video <laughs> yeah or like but i mean that was all leftover footage yeah, yeah I, 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 I was just mad i was just joking no i know but like i'm saying like that's leftover footage i used for a video part and yeah. i just literally used whatever because i needed a welcome to blue tile part my point is with all of this, this new social media landscape for skateboarding, it doesn't really matter if a big company backs you anymore. And I mean, it does to a certain extent, but in terms of being recognized by the masses or even younger skaters that look up to better skaters, kids see that following number and they're like, oh wow, he's relevant, mm -hmm. he's important. Pretty like, much back in the day, you would, you would see Chris Cole, Sean Malto, Mike right. Mo, all these skaters that everyone still knows and loves, but it's because they blew up, not only by their own efforts, but because companies, all of these big companies that sponsored them would blast their videos. And that's sort of the path that made them famous was all these big companies right. putting their video parts out. And it's well-deserved. Like their, yeah. their stuff was well-deserved, obviously. Crazy they're good. all great skateboarders. But there's so much good talent in skateboarding that is well-deserved recognition that I don't even think that there's enough big companies to take on all of these kids. They don't have enough money to sponsor all these kids and blow all these kids up. There's just not enough companies. Mm -hmm. that, that was like pretty much the only way to get recognized and get famous back then. It's but different. now it doesn't matter. You right. can do it. Like what he's saying is that's not like the, the tables have turned. Now you don't need that really. Right. The way that it works is, is if you have a large number of followers and you get a large number of views per video that is seen by not only just skateboarders, but it shows up in explore feeds that the algorithm of Instagram or the algorithm of YouTube will think those people might be interested in this type of content. Not only do individual people see that, but brands see that. Not only just like extreme sport affiliated brands or even sport affiliated brands, but brands outside of sporting and yeah. skating. They like, see that as real estate. That is a billboard, that is prime real estate. So they hit up these accounts, the people that run these accounts. And you know, and, and they, and that's how they, but, but that's how that people can make a living. Like, cause they'll make a creative video in the way that they create revolving around like the product that said brand. And wants the funny to thing is that's because marketing managers of those brands that aren't affiliated with skateboarding are smart. They know that they know that numbers matter. They know that the bigger your following is, the, bit, the the more value you bring to the company, the more sales you're gonna bring. The judgy mindset of a skater and a skater brand sometimes turns on itself because- I, I think it's changing. I think it's changing a lot It's now. changing, but for a while, but for a while, skate brands don't, since the, since it's a skate brand and there's too, min, there's too many politics, too many judgy things about it, they're dumb and they hurt themselves, unlike another app brand that will hit up a skater for the numbers. Right. There's this weird politics of if you make your own thing or if you're a YouTuber. I mean, this is changing, but for a while it was brands didn't really want to mess with you if you had a big following on your own because 
it's just whack or I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah, it's whatever politics it, it is. But yeah. It's definitely, definitely changing. But the second that a big brand takes on a social media savvy kid, it's game over. Like it's not gonna, it, it will no longer be uncool to sponsor kids with like a huge internet following. Yeah. The second that that happens, like if Welcome, Pyramid Country, any, any of these like really cool brands, and I'm not saying that those brands think that this kind of stuff is lame, but I'm saying the second that one of those brands take on a really internet-y based type guy, like it's no longer, it will no longer be uncool. And people will no longer look at that. It's already happened a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it has. I mean, Pyramid Country and Welcome Bowl have started out, and like Bronze, they've all started out as very internet-y based kind of content that they've put out. I'm saying the people that are pretentious about this kind of stuff are like the very like core elitist type skateboarders that are, that tend to gravitate towards the smaller, more cool hip brands. But the second that one of those hip brands branches into this, that stigma is gonna be gone. Like yeah. it'll be gone in a heartbeat. You have like a handful of these Instagram like famous skateboarder kids. You got like Versace Plug, Lil Dre, Young Spliff, I mean, watch you die. He also makes music too, but he also he always puts out edits that he's associated with Team Light Work. You Team get, Lightwork. you know, they kind of coined the whole trap edit thing on Instagram, and it, and that's like on it. right, right. And I mean, you know, that kind of stuff does get a lot of hate. And I don't want to really go into too much about like the hate. I'm beating a dead horse with, with that topic. Like, I just want to talk about the fact that Instagram kind of is, and like these social media platforms are taking over skateboarding, and that is seemingly the direction of where it's going. You can't keep up with like a, if you, if you're still filming a year for a video part, you're getting left. In the dust because all these other, everyone else is. I mean, still do that. I mean, I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily think that. I mean, maybe filming for a year, sure. But I think I think filming video parts will still like show whether it's called a video part or not. Showcasing your best skateboarding in like one three minute reel, like on um, whatever platform it is, is still gonna. I think it'll still always be like pretty relevant. Yeah, it'll be relevant. What I'm saying is the reason Instagram is taking over skateboarding is not only is accessibility. But people do get forgotten, right. you know, I mean, who you see, a, I don't want to name any names, but you'll see a video part come out and you're like, oh man, that's so sick. And then literally a month later, someone will remind you it and they'll be like, oh yeah, that was a video part. Right. It does go by. You get left in the dust is what I'm saying. I'm not saying you have to do this, but Instagram, another reason to bring back the point it's taking over is because not only is it so accessible, but it's sort of leading the, it's sort of leading the front, the, the staying relevant thing. Like yeah. to stay relevant, you can't, it, Relevant back in the day, it was filming a while for a video part, right. posting it. But now, what I'm saying is, with that pathway, relevance or your clout or your whatever it is you want, it's not necessarily the best idea to do that anymore in a form that is filming. For I mean, it's the same. Project. It, it's literally the same. Even though you should still do that, it's the same thing as online retailers versus storefronts. Amazon. Look at Amazon. Yep. Jeff yep. Bezos, the the world's most highest paid person, he has the biggest net worth. It's literally the same concept, like yep. online retailers pushed out storefronts, and yes, that's bad for a lot of storefronts. The fact that you have all this online accessibility, there's all these new, smaller businesses and brands that have come to be through the internet. Like, I've been able to start a small clothing brand because of this. Slamming. There is opportunity there. You just have to like do your research and know how to like. None work of this it. is even really new because the whole for the history of the world, everyone knows that you either adapt to the situation or you or you die. Right. You adapt or you be left behind. So right. technology is always going to keep coming out. Tech, new things are always going to be evolving and producing and coming out. So you either learn to adapt to the situation of these new things, you know, Instagram, other social media platforms, or. You eat member berries and stick to the old way, and you die out. I've never heard that expression. Member, member berries. berries. That's like member back when. Oh, oh. Member. Okay. I get remember it. back when this happened. Remember, yeah. remember how it's... South Park did a whole entire episode on member berries. You see, we all want to go back to when we were kids, just recycled and plopped in our tummies. So the one brand that is very social media savvy, and they even like have ads on YouTube, uh, is Primitive. Primitive crushes it on social media, I think. They're, Primitive's with the, with the, they're with the what's in. Right. They're, they're with they're it. They're adapting. And I think, yeah. you know, I read an interview a long time ago about P-Rod and how he wanted, how he's talking about pretty soon brands will no longer be the face of like skateboarding and individual skateboarders will be 
the face of their own brand, and yeah. he's completely right. That is literally what's happening right now. It's inevitable. I read that. I read that almost ten years ago. He doesn't he doesn't seem to care about the stigma, which is really refreshing to see. Also, he's bigger than like everyone, so it's like I, yeah. I mean, he, like who who? Oh oh, this little company that like he was Nija before Nija is what he was like, and he's maintained his his clout and not right. not clout. I don't call it clout, but his, his like how people view him. No one who hates Pira. What I'm saying is he's maintained his I'm P Rod like. I haven't died out. Everyone, everyone still knows P Rod. Everyone still watches him. Everyone right. still loves him. Right. Why would he care? Like, yeah. Who? What does he care about? Us, a little company that's core. That's like, oh, we're doing this because we're cooler. Yeah. He's like, okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's dozens and dozens of these kids out there that have like these types of followings. Dylan Jabe. Oh, Dylan Jabe. Yeah, yeah. He's like blowing up right now. He he's, he's so really, good. He's got a really good style. Yeah. I think he skates for zero. He does skate for zero. He yeah. does skate for zero. Yep. Yeah. So see, you know, brands are starting to like pick up on this kind of stuff, and I think it's, I think it's cool. In a time where skateboarding is nearly run by big business, aka like you know brands like Nike and Adidas, and you got the Olympics coming up, and you have these big street league contests, social media kind of puts that DIY back in skating, and I like that. I love that. I can just do this all myself. Mm -hmm. That's what I got into skateboarding. Yeah. Why would you depend on anyone else? You know who? You know who is almost. I consider him almost an Instagram skater now, even though he's he's been relevant before. He's a rise for primitive. Uh, that Will Fiok. Oh yeah. But he he's still he's putting out the edits like the Instagram edits like yeah. The, you know he's always putting out. But he's kind of a blurred line. In his edits are like all these big pros that aren't like that. Well, that's he's some, like that's he's some, like relevant in the core scene too. Right. So he's like he's like in the gray area. Well, that's something else I wanted to talk about. Like where's the where's the line and like when is is it gonna bridge over or is it gonna stay separate like. Who's gonna, and I don't think it's necessarily gonna like bridge over in terms of like everybody's gonna be able to adapt to this. Brands who don't adapt are obviously gonna die off and those who were able to adapt will sustain and like grow with this like new landscape yeah. because, and I don't even know if people are still talking about this in mainstream skateboarding because I don't read magazines anymore. I used to read magazines all the time and there. There's your example right there. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're right. But they used to talk about this in interviews. Like, what do you think about like, that social was so, new. <laughs> yeah, it was new. Like, this was like seven years ago um, when I was working at Launch, the skate shop. You would read in the interviews like people talking about the internet and like why it sucks and why it sucks that people don't do full lengths anymore. And like, look at this now. Like, you see all this Instagram content going viral all the time. But even the barracks is really with it now. They're definitely making an effort to like keep up with what's current in skateboarding, and that's. And who doesn't know who the barracks is? And if you think about it, a year ago, the barracks was not with it. No, they weren't. They were not posting. This was recently were, after yeah. they shut down the skateboard mag. They see the wave coming. So many repost pages that come along with this. You got Metro Skateboarding, you got Skate Crunch, you got Broken Magazine. All of these repost pages that are posting like all of this skate content mm -hmm. where you can see it and they have huge followings. And that's how all these other kids get noticed too. That's so, what I'm saying, the wave. The it, wave. The Every, wave, Everyone yeah. is, it's like, it's a wave. It's, it's literally it's a whole, it's too, there's too much of it getting pushed that you can't, you can't be a company and be like, oh, we're gonna stand against this wave. Right. There's too much. What are you gonna, you can't win. There's there's too many pages, too many kids. Out, there's too many social media outlets that have algorithms that surpass all of this. Right. Like, the con I the mean, kids Facebook, want con people want content. Facebook is bigger than Thrasher and the Barracks. Like, they- Facebook is bigger than everything. No, no shit, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, they know, like, they're obviously gonna have people working on these algorithms to try to push out content to people mm -hmm. that people wanna see so they can maximize their advertising and revenue. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And like, like Facebook is thinking about it tenfold because they're dealing with not just skateboarders, they're Everyone. dealing with every single person. And it's a, the bottom line is people just wanna see content. I don't know why every time a change happens in the world, there has to be politics behind it. I know. People just want to see content. When I was 14, and had my and had my phone or had a magazine or had my computer or whatever. I didn't give a rip where the skate video came from or right. who posted it or what. I just wanted to see skating. Right. Like, if it's on Instagram, cool. If it's on Thrasher Mag, cool. It's clear to see that the social media outbreak with the videos is clearly a wave that is taking over. All the the millions of kids that are watching and not even kids, the millions of people that are watching, they don't care. They don't care if, about your politics. They want to see the video. Right. My point is, you can't defeat that. There's too many people right. that are going to back and support all of these videos coming from social media. You can't be a brand that just stops that. Yeah. There's too many people watching too many videos from repost pages. And if kids ever do start caring about that stuff, they're not going to care about it until they're like 
18 because when I was 14 and 15 like all I wanted to see was skate content and I didn't and I wasn't involved in any of the skate politics until I turned like 18 and people started trying to tell me what was cool and what wasn't. Oh and it's gonna happen again whenever those kids are 18 and 19 there's gonna be a new thing that is whack and exactly. it's gonna take over. Exactly. I don't know I think that's it. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this topic. If you want me to do more videos like this, please leave a comment below. Also, join the discussion. Let's talk about this shit. I love, love talking about this because it's interesting. It's very interesting to me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Link he is has in the one description. of those. Subscribe to mine as well. And uh, like the video. Engagement helps. You're, why is your camera blinking? I don't know. Leave comments. Okay. Bye, slamming. Peace. Pop up with a blind hub, pulling on her hair, fuck her in her ass hub. I'm, I'm, I'm a nasty nigga, she trashy, she's sucking on my dick, finger fucker in the back. Bitches, bitches,